Hello everybody, it's Tuesday and I'm still not here. So let me give you something to do. What we're going to be doing today is we're going to be figuring out how far did Katniss Everdeen run on that first day of the 74th annual Hunger Games. Let me give you a few facts. The Hunger Games started at noon. Noon is when all of the tributes heard the bell and started. Sunset that day was 7 p.m. The average speed that Katniss Everdeen ran and walked is 13 miles per hour. Your mission is to find out just how far she was from the cornucopia by the time sun set. There is homework, and I'll tell you that in a bit. So Hunger Games is a bit too easy for you. Well, I have one. This should take the rest of the period. I love reading, particularly dark stories, stories about fear. I was reading this one story. It's called Dagon. It's written by H.P. Lovecraft, a predecessor of Stephen King. Let me read you a little bit about it. It was in one of the most open and least frequented parts of the broad Pacific that the packet of which I was supercargo fell victim to the German sea raider. The Great War was then at its very beginning, and the ocean forces of the Hun had not completely sunk into their later degradation, so that our vessel was made a legitimate prize, whilst we of her crew were treated with all the fairness and consideration due us as naval prisoners. So liberal indeed was the discipline of our captors that five days after we were taken, I managed to escape alone in a small boat with water and provisions for a good length of time. When I finally found myself adrift and free, I had but little idea of my surroundings. Never a competent navigator, I could only guess vaguely by the sun and stars that I was somewhat south of the equator. Of the longitude, I knew nothing and no island or coastline was in sight. The weather kept fair, and for unaccounted days I drifted aimlessly beneath the scorching sun, waiting either for some passing ship or to be cast on the shores of some habitable land. But neither ship nor land appeared, and I began to despair in my solitude upon the heaving vastness of unbroken blue. The change happened whilst I slept. Whilst I slept. Its details I shall never know, for my slumber, though troubled and dream-infested, was continuous, and when at last I awakened, it was to discover myself half-sucked into a slimy expanse of hellish black mire, which extended about me in monotonous undulations as far as I can see, and in which my boat lay grounded some distance away. Though one might well imagine that my first sensation would be of wonder at so prodigious and unexpected a transformation of scenery, I was in reality more horrified than astonished, for there was in the air and in the rotting soil a sinister quality which chilled me to the very core. The region was putrid with the caresses of decaying fish and of other less describable things which I saw protruding from the nasty mud of the unending plain. Perhaps I should not hope to convey in mere words the unutterable hideousness that can dwell in absolute silence and barren immensity. There was nothing within hearing, and nothing in sight save a vast reach of black slime, yet the very completeness of the stillness and the homogeneity of the landscape oppressed me with a nauseating fear. The sun was blazing down from a sky which seemed to me almost black in its cloudless cruelty, as though reflecting the inky marsh beneath my feet. As I crawled into the stranded boat, I realized that the only one theory could explain my position. Through some unprecedented volcanic upheaval, a portion of the ocean floor must have been thrown to the surface, exposing regions for which innumerable millions of years have lain hidden under the unfathomable watery depths. So great was the extent of the new land which had risen beneath me that I could not detect the faintest noise of the surging ocean. 
strain my ears as I might, nor were there any sea fowl to prey upon the dead things. Well, that was pleasant. So his situation seems pretty bleak. Adrift in a boat, and uh, he didn't really know where he was. We're better navigators than he is. What happened was, he escaped from that German boat, and he was adrift. Drifting speed is about three miles per hour. He escaped on that boat at night and fell asleep. The average speed of that boat was 30 miles per hour. He was adrift for a total of eight hours. What is the maximum distance away from that boat? What is the maximum distance our protagonist is from the ship that he escaped? Also, what could have happened is that they could be drifting in the same direction. In that case, what is the minimum? Work on this. I'll have homework for you shortly. You're still here. Well, let me give you homework then. I'm going to tell you some facts about this right here. This has a range of 20 feet and has an air time of 2 seconds. I want to know the muzzle speed for this. This over here, this has a range of 50 feet. It's got an air time of 3 seconds. Figure out the muzzle speed. This over here, this over here, it has a range of 100 feet in 4 seconds. Tell me the muzzle speed. That's your homework. Put it on a separate sheet of paper, hand it in to me tomorrow.